welcome uh, everyone to testing we uh, thank you everyone for joining us today welcome uh, sonali thank you for sharing your, your knowledge with our community so uh, the idea is that uh, right now you can you can go ahead and start in this virtual stage thank you hello everyone uh, welcome to the today's session uh, how many of you have heard of uh, web page accessibility before i will today explain about what is web page accessibility how do you uh, test it and why it is important to test and uh, how to test it manually and uh, uh, through uh, test automation and what are the you know tools available uh, to help us uh, in testing the web page accessibility okay so let's begin you know uh, over the past few years, we are much more digitally connected. If you can see, like today, our uh, there was a time when we have to get up and switch on the lights. We have to uh, con connect to the people through video. That was a kind of a dream. Now everything is like digitalized. We are the wall seems very small, and we are very much well connected. The digital uh, technology not only connect us to the world, but it makes our life easy. Just sitting at home, everything we order uh, and get it delivered to home. Everything is possible through now uh, digital technology. But uh, after the uh, COVID situation, if you observe, uh, we are much more dependent on the uh, digital technology, sitting at home, we tried uh, remotely, we tried to operate everything with the less contact. And that, um, at that time, you know, the uh, companies, the websites, everything which are digital, uh, digitally, you know, advanced, they did their business very well. And they helped us uh, to fulfill our basic needs. Like you stay at home, you get your groceries home delivered. You stay at home, uh, check with your doctor through the, you know, like in UK that Levy app is there. That I'm sure in other country, there are different apps would have been there, which would have been help you to connect to your doctors. Um, it's, it is quite possible. So, uh, you know, after this uh, pandemic situation, you know, the uh, dependency on the digital technology has been increased. According to a, sto a study uh, by the McKinsey, you know, uh, after I mean, in globally in June 2017, it was only average con uh, customer interaction of for the digital technologies are like 20%, which continued uh, the same in May 2018 till that and December 2019, it increased to 36%. And by July 2020, it is 58%. And I'm sure by now it would have been more. But uh, have you ever thought that how would uh, this can be accessible uh, to the people who are unfortunately, you know, uh, not gifted with uh, my might be the uh, ability to heal or see or you know physically they are like disabled. So uh, as per a study, like one in seven people uh, are disabled worldwide. Worldwide, you can see this uh, figure like one forty eight million uh, people have other disabilities. Three hundred sixty. Uh, 60 million people have the hearing uh, disability. Uh, 285 million people can't see. And um, 194 people have learning or cognitive uh, disability. So how these people can access uh, this web technology? They also uh, need to, you know, like we do shopping. They do also do shopping. In fact, for them, it is much more uh, important because they will need to be, you know, uh, independent and they don't have to be on dependent on uh, ev uh, anyone. So it, it is very much important that you know uh, your website. How we can like uh, we as a uh, normal person who can hear, who can see what is uh, there on the screen, they can actually should be. What is the way like they can actually do that? 
you might have heard about the screen readers, the different assistive technologies, uh, other which help them. But uh, if your websites are, you know, not uh, enabling uh, those uh, technology, then those uh, assistive technology like screen readers, text to speech, uh, recognition, those things can't read it. So how do that work? So let's talk about accessibility. Uh, how do I have to? Okay. So uh, accessibility is nothing, but it is a term which, which describes uh, if, how to make something accessible. Uh, by the less privileged uh, people. Now, what is web access uh, accessibility? Web accessibility is a term which described it, which is able to make you access, uh, you know, the web page irrespective of, uh, you know, any kind of um, a disability. So, how does then uh, this web accessibility work? I have actually, for the sample purpose, taken uh, the Mark and Spencer uh, web page. If you uh, right click on any web page, uh, you and uh, uh, select the inspect option, you would be finding actually the uh, HTML uh, page structure, which is also called the DOM structure. Okay. So this, uh, what happens when uh, any web page, you launch it at that time, uh, the web technology, uh, the HTML, uh, um, the browser, what exactly it would do, uh, does is it converts, um, it reads not only the DOM, it correct if there are any issues are there and it also help you to identify that issue and it will show you in the console. And I'll show you that uh, part also. So it does that and uh, it converts uh, the accessible, uh, the DOM to an accessibility tree. Now, what is accessibility tree? If you, uh, again, uh, you know, uh, on the right-hand side, select the accessibility section, you would be finding actually um, this accessibility tree. Accessibility tree is nothing but similar to the DOM structure, but it is much more semantic way, means much more readable or understandable way. Like for example, here in this, uh, if you see in this space, uh, the pointer is on the, uh, that uh, I have selected the omen menu um, here and uh, accordingly the DOM structure has been given. Similar way, uh, this, the accessibility tree has been formed, which is like web area, welcome to the Mark and Spencer, then generic, then banner, then navigation, then list, then list uh, item, and then link, then omen, then text domain. That is how actually the any uh, screen reader or text to read um, uh, speech uh, recognition uh, technology, you know, they would read that way. That. So uh, accessibility tree is nothing but it is a DOM plus area. Now what is uh, uh, area? A area is uh, application reach internet accessibility, which means that it actually makes uh, any um, uh, down to much more semantic way. Like I uh, said it, so whenever actually any browser is uh, launched, uh, uh, launch any web page, so at that time, it actually uh, reads that HTML page and uh, then uh, through the DOM API, uh, it correct it if and there are any issues are there and uh, modify it, then uh, through that DOM API, it creates actually an accessibility uh, tree. Through this uh, JavaScript, it, cre it creates an accessibility trees. And um, then there is actually a, a something called accessibility API, which actually reads that accessibility tree. And it uh, the assistive technology uh, use this accessibility API, you know, uh, to read this any kind of accessibility tree and accordingly it will uh, help the interact the user with the uh, website. For example, the user uh, press any uh, say a button. So um, like how um, the submit uh, event would have been there. Similarly equivalent some like uh, press uh, submit or some equivalent event would have been there. Uh, which actually this accessibility tree converts it into the uh, accessibility API converts that into that uh, su submit event. And again, according to that, again, accordingly, it will convert to the DOM tree. 
and uh, it will interact uh, suppose if uh, any button is pressed and similarly reading wise also like i said it it uh, converts the dom api converts uh, uh, into the accessibility tree and the accessibility tree is read by the accessibility api and accessibility api will pass that info to the access assistive technology like screen readers text to speech etc and that will uh, uh, speak to user this is what it is i'll just give a, a small uh, demo i'll stop it here and i'll give a, a small demo i have actually created uh, two pages one is uh, page 1 where uh, i have uh, written like a uh, uh, simple accessibility testing and we'll learn about accessibility testing and another uh, page i have created where i have uh, not written in one word but i have written h e l l o a l l uh like each one as on one one heading okay like i as a normal person if i read then i will see that okay this is hello all but uh, let's see how the screen reader reads it let me launch uh, first that and for that actually i would uh, use um, and uh, uh, the chrome has uh, uh what do you say then add in uh, so i would use that add in i'll add to this chrome let it get added it got added now chrome vox spoken feedback is ready are you able to uh, hear the screen reader please raise the hand if you are able to read it window page 2.html tab h heading 1 okay fine uh so if h e l l o a l l see the screen reader didn't read hello all it re read h e l l o l a l l however let me launch now the page 1 tab accessibility testing heading 1 accessibility testing we will learn about accessibility testing so you see the two page difference the first page i had actually uh, how would i accessibility testing we will learn about accessibility testing okay let me screen now reader. remove it from chrome, chrome otherwise remove. it will keep on speaking so uh, you see and the, how would i okay so in the page 2 uh i have not uh, you know developed it properly uh, because i had put it each as a one one heading so it read uh, my page as h e l l o a l l now if i as a uh, not not a normal person but a physical disabled physically disabled person um, or less privileged person wanted to access this page then i would have uh, not understood it what exactly it is because the screen reader would have read it like h e l l o a l l which is not right that is the reason why the accessibility has to be correct and let uh, like i said it let me go to the inspect okay this is the dom structure which has been created and uh, let and it has like i said it it will uh, point if there are any errors are there okay you can see this thing right this javascript uh, is there in the background by the browser which actually corrects it or point it out if there are any issues are there and if you go to this accessibility portion yeah so you can see automatically a uh, static text has been created like if i go to this body there is like this way automatically uh, the accessibility tree has been formed whereas i have not uh, you know created any uh, accessibility thing or any area area attributes i have not created it but as you can see automatically the uh, browser uh, has been created on accessibility tree now 
this has to be like you can see that right the area levels are not specified if those things are not properly specified and if those are not written properly then you know uh, a norm a person who is less privileged can't uh, read or uh, anything you know so that is now uh, every time we can't just like uh, run the screen readers or similar assistive technology to test it right if we have to test it in bulk how do we do it and if we have to test it in auto through the automation how would we do it so let's uh, learn about that but before that we just let's learn why it is uh, important and if there are any guidelines are there like because every country is uh, norms are different and uh, there should be a common guideline should be there for which uh, everyone should follow it uh, for the accessibility because i staying in uk can access any page in us or canada or australia or india anywhere okay so the but norms should be same so that's why we have something called web c and uh, wcag guideline so um, that guideline says that what should be uh, uh, the standard of the web content accessibility which need to be followed so that a person with the disability uh, can access the web page normally like uh, any other person so there are actually three versions are there one is wcag 2.0 which has been published on the 11 december 2008 uh then there is wcag 2.1 which has been published on 5th, uh, june 2018 then there is wcag 2.2 which has been published on uh 2020 which has to be published in 2021 uh but it has not yet published by till now everyone is following uh, 2.1 okay now let's learn why uh, accessibility we learn now what is accessibility testing but uh, let's learn why it is important if we don't do it what would happen so one thing we learned it that okay the poor person with the less privileged uh, they can't access the web page but what are the other implications so first thing is uh, one point is like i said it equality because everyone should uh, access the uh, content equally uh, the person with the less privilege also should be able to access any web page like i is i have taken an example of mark and spencer which is actually a retail store so anyone in the world uh, can shop from that store so if that is not accessible then a person who is le less privileged they can't be able to uh, shop it and what if like they incorrectly the screen read uh, reader reads it and they purchased uh, an incorrect item that would be unfair to them so that should that is the reason why the equality has been imposed and there is also a uh, legalization is there like every government uh, also you know publishes uh, there are certain norms they have published and if you don't follow it there would be you know implications uh, would be there so if you see it uh, as per the public sector bodies uh, website and mobile application accessibility regulation 2018 uk all the uh, you know public sector website has to be a uh, accessible uh, and if you are not doing it then you are uh, uh, um, bound to pay some fines uh, similarly as per the uh, title 3 of the americans with the disability act ada us prohibit prohibit the discrimination on the basis of the disability in the activities of the public accommodations while the law and enacted the primarily to focus on the obstacle of the physical location but it is also applicable to the website as well similarly european accessibility act covers uh, product and services that have been identified as being most important uh, person with the disabilities while being most likely to, um, to have diverging accessibility requirement across european countries and uh, as per the 1.8 uh, accessibility guideline for the indian government uh, website 
to implement uh, the conventions india has enacted the rights of person with disability act 2016 on 27 and december 2016 with regard to the icit of the uh, one of the important provision in the act and that all content have available in the audio print or electronic media must be in the accessible format similarly according to the accessibility uh, accessible canada act bill uh, c81 uh, one uh, one of the purposes of the act to prevent accessibility barrier is uh, in information and communication technology including the digital uh, content and technology and if anyone is not following it you can see that they may have to end up uh, paying the fine up to the 250 uh, means um, 2 lakhs 50000 dollar canadian uh, dollar which is a huge amount so which i don't think any you know business or uh, uh, web uh, uh, company wanted to uh, do that pay that so that is the important that it is much more important that your accessibility has to be tested otherwise anyone can uh, you know if they want they can go to the court similarly business promotion like suppose i uh, as a person who are having uh, you know difficulty in hearing or um, difficult uh, difficulty in seeing uh, the things so in that case uh, if i want to purchase something and if the web page is not accessible so obviously that in that way i am not getting much benefited so i won't be able to do it so like i earlier said it there are many people in this world who are less privileged in terms of the ability to see hear or uh, talk so such uh, in such cases the it is much more important that uh, uh, you have to make uh, your web page accessible and you have to make it uh, it's testing um, properly so that uh, it can be verified that the web page uh, is accessible by everyone like the normal uh, people so what exactly you have to do it uh, when you do the ex uh, accessibility testing so there i have actually prepared some uh, checklist before that let's go to that previous page here this page what where are the part uh, which you actually can test it one second so now uh, one thing is that uh, this uh, assist through assistive technology is a is the one on which uh, these peoples who are uh, less privileged depend so the assistive technology read the accessibility api so it is much more important that accessibility api uh, has to be properly tested because if the accessibility api is not you know reading uh, the accessibility tree properly then obviously uh in this junction uh this the information passed to this uh, users would be not correct so that that, that is the point uh, that is the reason why you have to test properly this accessibility api part which actually read this accessibility um, read and obviously write also because whenever the, this users interact anything like they press something or they type something this uh, mm, information via accessibility api passed to this uh, drom structure so that is the reason why there is one part is that you have to test this accessibility api part then another part is this drom apis which actually converts um, your drom structure to the accessibility tree so it uh, one thing is uh, need to be tested that your accessibility tree is uh, formed properly and third thing is that Uh, all your attributes are uh, given all the area attributes uh, has to be given properly in the accessibility tree so which you have to define in your uh, dom structure otherwise uh, your accessibility tree won't be formed correctly and uh, of course uh, you uh, like as in device testing you can obviously test this uh, or the uh, technologies this assistive uh, technologies uh, that can be device that can be any uh, addins like i use one uh, just few minutes before i have shown it so these are the three parts uh, which you need to test uh, and now let's go back to the checklist
So, like I said, it uh, these are the th three things which you need to uh, test properly. So, when the testing web, uh, web uh, you have to test web accessibility, you need to test uh, check that accessibility accessibility tree is created as per the WCAG standard. Accessibility APIs are transferring responses properly. Assistive technology tools are matching the accessibility tree requirement. Then there are some more are there like uh, your compatible keyboard operation support, screen reader is reading properly, images, like every images should have an alt text. If you are not mentioning the alt text, then in that case, a person who can't see, uh, they can't know there is an image in the website. Uh, similarly, zooming ability, when you are zooming uh, any web page at that time, uh, there should not be uh, the, uh, the visibility or any uh, content should not be damaged. Uh, like suppose I, I had zoomed it and it should say that it has been zoomed 90% and after zooming and a particular small figures uh, you wanna see. I, if I can see, I can see it. If I am not able to see and there is a small text is there in that image, that should have been, you know, all text should have been there for that. Otherwise uh, the person who is zooming it uh, uh, and that person is not able to see it, they can't know that what is there inside that image. Uh, similarly, UI should be as per the WCAG standard and font and background color should be accessible to the differently abled people. Like some people, uh, you know, they have the color by blindness. So this should be matched the WCAG standard uh, so that it should be accessible to everyone. And then area attributes, like I said, it, it has to be provided properly uh, so that the screen content is uh, accessible and CSS style should be proper so that it is correctly accessible by everyone. Now we learned what is web accessibility testing, why it is important and what we need to test. But how do we test it? What are the tools available uh, which help us, uh, you know, to test these things? So, uh, like I said, it or, or like any testing, uh, web accessibility can be tested uh, both manually and through automation. There are some tools uh, which I have specified, but there are many others. But to name it some, I have given like web evaluation, WCAG, accessibility audit, uh, uh, developer UI, then um, tenant DQX, uh, Dino Mapper. Ali compliance platform, then there is site improved. There are many other, you know, I just named few. So uh, you can use one of these are most, uh, some are, you know, uh, free, some are actually uh, commercially available. Let's see actually how to do it manually uh, through uh, one of the tool I have taken is web evaluation tool. Uh, and how do you get it? To add a web evaluation tool extension, just navigate to the uh, this website, https.web.webaim.org uh, and click on the browser extension tab. It would be adding a Chrome extension tab. Once it would be added, you would be finding like this. I have also added in mine. Like you would be finding a symbol, something called, called like this. And let's take like three, Morgan Spencer. You just go and visit it. And click on that uh, add in. You see? Uh, it would point you out um, what are the errors are there, what are the warnings are there, and what are the structural elements are there, what is the contrast error, and what is, you know, area attributes uh, error, what are the features, everything it would show you in the summary. And if you want to see in details, either you can click on the details tab or you can click on view details. Okay, now uh, what this error means, each error is C. For example, alternative text, what exactly it means is. So if you click on any such thing, it will highlight what exactly this is. Okay, these images don't have any alt text. 
okay and this is if you further uh, you know click on this reference sorry that should be a reference yeah if you click on this reference what exactly it means it will uh, explain to you so it means that a link contains no text or function or purpose of the link will not be presented to the user. This can uh, introduce confusion for the keyboard and screen reader users. And it also uh, mention how to fix it. So you can see each, uh, like you can click on each and every details. Like here it is like I was showing to this, that one, the alt text one. So in this link image, uh, alternative doc, uh, text was missing. And what exactly it means that image without alternate text results in an empty link. And why it matters. The images that are not only the things with the link must have descriptive alternative text, but it has image within a link contains no text. That image does not provide alternative text. Screen reader has no content to present to user regarding the function of this link. So how to fix it? It has uh, said that uh, appro add appropriate alternative text. So this is one way. And you can actually, when you are testing it, you can actually prepare a report and you can provide it to your developer. So these are the things which are missing, um, which you need to fix it, as you can see. And they have also given it uh, like priority wise. This is like high one, like red ones. These are errors. And then there are warnings are there that like alerts. This is not uh, a major issue, but yeah, these are alerts kind of thing. These are the features. Like, uh, let, me, let me take it one of this. But it means that it means that the image alternative text is uh, present. So these are the things which is working fine actually. And on um, more over to that, if you want to see it, uh, which actually WCAG standard it violates, if you go all the way below. It shows it. Actually, it's standardized guidelines in 1.1.1 non text content level A and 2.4.4 link purpose in context level A. And if you click on further, it will take you to the WCAG guidelines. Yeah, you can see that WCAG checklist. This is the one which actually it had violated. And if you further click on this, it says that which part of that, this is WCAG 2.1, as per that of this criterion, this has, uh, it had violated. So I'll actually, I had pre-recorded that uh, as in video. Uh, let me play it, hope, uh, one second, auto zoom it. Let me. The same thing which I have said, just and that I have only recorded it. I can actually skip it if you want. Alternative text. And why it matters? If you don't provide the alternative text, the blind people who only uh, you know rely on the screen reader the screen reader can't uh, know what this image is because there is no alt text is there and each so that's the reason why the blind people won't get to know there are such images are there like this icons facebook twitter pinterest youtube instagram etc they won't get to know so how to fix it those attributes need to be added and which guideline it had followed if you click on this if you see there is a link at it 
on it and this is 1.1.1 g 2.1 stand access criterion yeah like i already have explained it so i would not take much time of yours now let's uh, know uh, we learn now how to do it uh, manually uh, if we have to test similarly there would be other tools are the uh, some are like uh, uh, commercially available and they would uh, provide you a, a pdf report also uh, and uh, some open source tools uh, are also available like you can uh, use it as an extension uh, chrome extension and you can test it but uh, how to test it uh, through the automation so there is actually a dqx library is there which is actually from the dq organization they have actually a git repository as well which you can refer it yeah they actually have this dq uh, repository is that you can use this uh, uh, x uh, library you know as an dependency uh, and what would be your uh, pom structure or um, in the pom.xml file or uh, in the dependency details what would be in the pom .x, uh, in the maven pom.xml or in the gradle build.gradle what would be the dependency they also have explained it uh, you can take that as a dependency but one thing i wanted to say that in olio version uh, of the x library you used to add, there need to be added the x.mean.js and other file but right now those things are not uh, uh, required uh, as you can see like in, if you are using the build.gradle uh, version uh, 4.1.2 you don't have to add any x.mean.js um, or any other file you can directly use this uh, dependency as it is what you have to do is like i let me walk through it so i uh, you actually uh, they have uh, a class uh, called results so you can create an instance of that results class and uh, uh, then uh, for from the new x builder uh, you can take uh, the analyze get driver you just pass your driver like my i have uh, created an instance of driver as a get driver you just have to pass your driver here and then uh, you can get that violation and you can store it in the list of uh, rule data type and then check if the violation size is uh, equal to zero this is important because if you don't do it then any of your x repo mm, report is not won't be formed and you won't get to know that is the reason why you just check it that whether your violation size is zero or not and if it is uh, zero then in that case just you add a um, like uh, print, uh, a log or a print system dot print um, uh, ln out uh, system dot out dot print ln uh, that no violation found uh, print statement you can add it or anything as per you just to uh, confirm that there is no violation is there and where you have to add that, uh, the violation report you can uh, actually configure your path like i configured it uh, on my user directory in the date and uh, time format like this way like it would come as a x report because i had uh, given it like x report so it would form it in the date and time format it would create it and uh, accordingly i can know that which has been like uh, used i would run that also and you there are two, uh, actually uh, x provided in two way one is json file one is actually um, in uh, text file so in the json file format uh, uh, you can see the result and i had right now commented it i would uncomment it run it and i would uh, uh, comment it run it two way i can show it and if you uh, uh, don't want json just write want the text one then for the text one uh, you can use uh, get readable x results uh, where you have to method and where you have to pass it you know result type uh, dot violation dot get key and your driver and the violations and then um, 
if that is there and then if it is true and there are violations are there then in that case you know uh, x reporter dot write uh, result to text file the method is there where you have to pro provide the path and uh, get uh, x reporter dot get x results uh, string you have to pass it so automatically it will form you know create your uh, report so let me run it because enough i have explained it let me run it and i'll walk through you means uh, any questions okay let me run it will basically i had created actually a feature file where basically it will launch my application and verify my accessibility that's it and i had used selenium uh, as you can see that selenium cucumber obdd framework but you can use anything as per your wish but uh, just use uh, their x library is in dependency in the selenium and you can test it so basically it launched okay mine it's done close it let me see so, yeah it ran it so basically, even if there would have been any violation, I had marked it as passed because the thing is that I wanted that my accessibility is getting tested or not. That's what I wanted to check. So as you can see, a text file has been formed. So it has told uh, what are the, like, one second. Yeah. So it has shown you like what are the tags has been used. And by the way, you can also you filter it by the tags uh, by giving it in there while testing it uh, you know in those method uh, you wanted to test only wcag two way or wcag 412 like that way it is it means that wcag standard 2.1 or dot 4.1.2 this is wcag 1.3.1 like that way it would be so it says that uh, for uh, as per the tags um, uh, area, area hidden element do not contain focusable elements, help URL, and these are the HTML element. And using this HTML elements, actually, you can uh, create, uh, you know, of XPath, and you can uh, using the uh, uh, screen capture of facility of the Selenium, you can. Um, uh, uh, you know, embed it into the, if you are using extend report or allure report, you can do that as well. I have not done here. I have done it in my client site. And unfortunately for the security reason, I can't show it, but you can do it. Basically you have to form an X path and uh, then you uh, screen capture that uh, particular uh, one by highlighting it and uh, that X path and then screen capture it. So basically it will highlight what exactly the portion where it has that issue. But one problem it would be, it would be slow down your execution. So this is the report, like it said it. And second one is the element must have the sufficient color contrast. So, and as per this uh, standards, uh, it is not following it that WCAZ2, um, uh, 2.1.2 AA, WCAZ 2.1, 1.4.3, and then cat.color. So these are the areas. And let me run it uh, with, uh, you know, uh, JSON report also I will show you. So I'll just uncomment it. And I'll run it again. Yeah, it's done. And this time, as you can see, a text report has been formed. And let me see. And there is a JSON report. This is the JSON one, but this is not pretty print. They have not used it, but you can use uh, any of the like Jackson JSON or any such thing uh, and then use pretty print. It would do a nice, um, 
json structure it would uh, give you so i would stop here then i would uh, uh, like to uh, know if you guys have any questions i think we have some minutes so we can you can answer some questions if we have yeah. Ah, uh, let me go through the chat sessions, if there are any. Not yet, but let's see if anyone yeah. wants to ask something. I wrote you on the chat or also do it openly. Uh, in the CI/CD pipeline, you can easily implement it because the thing is that in the CI/CD, uh, it is the same code. What you are running locally, you are running the same thing in the CI/CD pipeline. So you don't have to do anything extra for this. The same, uh, you have like I have written the code in my for the verify accessibility. Similarly, the same code you have to write it. Then uh, you uh, deploy it into the I mean, CI/CD. Like you have to clone it. Uh, like you have to, in the pipeline, you have to write uh, the stages for the cloning it, then running the test. For that, you have to write that command line uh, for that running the test and you have to do it. When do you start planning the accessibility testing in a new project? So accessibility testing, you like if you are running in a sprint, whenever your web page is getting developed, like see, uh, page by page, they actually start developing, right? It would be best advice that when, because at the, nowadays everyone is going on Agile and Agile minimum viable uh, product is uh, more popular. Like you develop something and small and show it as an MVP and then go away. So when there is like when your any web phase is getting developed at that time, you start uh, testing accessibility instead of doing it at the end. Like, uh, like I have a website to develop and I have developed only one phase. Then I have to do it for that phase uh, web accessibility because it is independent of other phase. Any other questions? Good. So I think you answer all the questions. So thank you so much for being here with you. Thank you everyone for joining us. And Thanks for joining us. I hope I have clarified and taught you something new. It is really a pleasure to have you all. Thank you. So. Thank you very much and see you in the next testing OE activities. See you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.